Whether you're a real estate agent or a homeowner, I'm sure it's crossed your mind or a question you've had to answer is, is when are all the foreclosures coming? When is the big crash coming? When are house prices going to come down? I know 2008 is going to repeat itself. And I've done a couple other videos that I've really debunked this myth. And I want to go over three very specific graphs and charts that will show you exactly why in concrete facts, why 2008 and 2021 have about as little in common as Trump and Biden. So let's get to the charts. So the first thing you need to understand is I was a loan officer back during this crash days and nearly every other phone call I got was, hey, I wanna pull a bunch of cash out of my property as much as possible to pull out a bunch of money, take it up to 100% of the value of the property so I can buy investment properties. And then the other calls were, hey man, I wanna buy an investment property with all the cash out I just took out of my house. So one of the very important graphs that you want to look at right here on the screen with me is home equity cashed out. What this means is, is how many millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, or even billions of dollars in this case, people have been pulling out of their homes year by year. So what you guys can kind of see in this regards is starting in 2005, 2006, and 2007, you'll see these red charts. See this massive spike. Look, we had never even previously gotten anywhere even close to that. We saw a massive skyrocketing and billions and billions and billions of dollars. I mean, just looking at the math, basically twice as much equity was being taken out of homes in 2004 compared to 2006. And when you compare it to 2001, you're talking about three and a half times as much equity people were ripping out of their houses, meaning this many billions and billions of dollars were increased. Why is this important? Because the higher the loan amount goes, what happens? The less equity happens. And when the market turns on you, guess what? Your equity starts to come down and meets your loan amount pretty quickly, right? You have a $400,000 estimated loan on it and your house goes up to $600,000 and then you wanna go ahead and you wanna borrow $500,000, you got $100,000 of equity. Well, what happens when that $100,000 of equity starts to diminish when your property value starts to drop? You get underwater and that's what happened. So let's go ahead and compare it to right now. Here we are. So we saw cash out refinances plummet down for eight, nine, 10, 11, look how tiny that was. And now look, here in 2000, at the end of 2020, which peaked on the market, we were not even close to what we were in three, four, five, six, seven. So people left a ton of equity in their homes. What does this mean and why is this so important? People learned their lesson. They didn't strip every last bit of equity out of their home even though their home values today are way higher than where they were in 2006, 2007, but they got smart and they didn't increase that. I mean, you can see that the massive billions borrowed here compared to where we are at here. So now let's go out and let's look at the next chart. So, so now I want you guys to join me on this next chart. Now, if you guys remember last time, what ended up happening was people got behind on their mortgages and they entered in to some kind of workout plans. And what ended up happening was, is everybody, a massive, massive amounts of foreclosures. Once people kind of entered into default, they really didn't get their way out. And as I've gone over before, these were usually caused to funny loans, call them funny money loans or liar loans. People just stated their income. People ripped all their equity out of their homes. People bought way too many investment properties. All these things caused them to go into loss mitigation and they never got their way out. So one of the biggest comparisons, everyone was like, oh my gosh, everyone's entering into these forbearances. We got six, seven, eight million people entering into forbearances. The same thing's gonna happen. They're all gonna go to foreclosure and all these foreclosures are gonna hit the market. So let's see actually what has happened with some of those forbearances. So what you're gonna see on the chart of the 5,760 families that were granted into forbearance last year, this is what happened upon the expiration of those plans. Now, this is as of April. So what you're gonna see is, of those, you had about 2.3 million of them gone ahead and extended those plans. Now, what happened is, is don't get that wrong, most people that extended these plans, they were auto extended into it. This wasn't something they reached out and said, hey, please extend. No, it was like, hey, we had you in forbearance for three months. We're going ahead and rolling you right over, okay? Now, what happens is, is what all the other people that didn't do that, which is approximately over 3.4 million people, let's see what happened. Oh, what do you know? We had 2.3 million of those people 
they never even stopped paying. They were put into forbearance and they never even stopped paying their mortgage on time. News doesn't tell you that, right? They're not like, oh, hey, by the way, almost 40% of the people that are in forbearance never even stopped making their mortgage payment. They just happen to be auto enrolled in it. So literally 40% were never stopped making their mortgage payment while they were in forbearance. Now, another 500,000 people paid off their mortgage, paid it off. They refinanced it and paid it off, sold their home, paid it off. Sure as heck didn't see all those 500,000 houses that were supposedly paid off. Didn't see this massive supply hit the market, did we? No, we're still short on homes like crazy, right? So just in that alone, we had 44% of all the people that entered into forbearance never stopped paying on time or paid off their mortgage. Now, the other people, we had 481,000 of them that are in loss mitigation, okay? What is that percentage? You can do that math. It's roughly in the ballpark of about 8% of all the loans of mortgages that went into forbearance. Not 8% of homeowners. I know you, people are all telling you about 6% of all homeowners entered into forbearance. Yeah, they did. Only 8% of those 6% actually are in trouble. That's only a half a million homes. If you watched my other videos before, we need about 1.2 million homes just this month just to try to meet basic supply and so we're not so short. Well, guess what? There's only 481,000 in the hopper right there. And then 80,000 of them in those plans expired and they're currently in a delinquent phase. Now, what that basically means is these are the real ones that we have to worry about for foreclosures. Basically, they're not really working with loss mitigation. They're probably just gonna end up letting that house go. That's only 80,000 houses. Now, of the 2.3 million homes that are still had those forbearance extended, I'll tell you right now, as I mentioned it before, these people were auto enrolled in it. Very small percentage of them actually had to reapply. So, if there's anything that I have learned from being in this industry, most individuals that I have spoken to that entered into forbearance, they just took advantage of that program because they didn't want to have a worst case scenario. It was more of like, hey, let me just do it just as a safety net, let me bank some money. Very, very small percentage of those actually truly needed it. So if we even see worse numbers than this, look how small we're talking about, say of this 2.3, we're talking maybe another half a million, let's just call it worst case, maybe another 500,000, that means in total, 500,000 plus another 560,000, that means in total, we're looking at about 1.6 million people that are going to be delinquent in some way, shape, or form of all these houses. Now, don't confuse being delinquent and emit loss mitigation with foreclosure, okay? The laws are so strict right now that even back in 2008 and 9, you only had about 40% of the people actually get foreclosed on that went 120 days or, or beyond delinquent. Now, since then, there's insanely strict guidelines that have come into play. So, truthfully speaking, you know, even if we get a big number, we're not looking at more than maybe a quarter million foreclosures hitting the market based on these numbers. So, these millions of foreclosures you're hitting about, hearing about in the news, that's not the facts. Data doesn't lie. You see it right here. These are direct numbers directly from Black Knight Mortgage Data that has all the data from all the mortgages with all the servicers, the GSEs, Fannie, Freddie, all of these ones, FHA, VA, and put them all into play. Now, the next chart is where it's going to blow your mind, so let's jump over there. Now, this chart behind me is by far the most telling. If you knew anything or can remember anything about the last housing crash, the big issue was is people didn't have enough equity in their home to do anything other than foreclose on that property. Many times they're just walked away. You know, their house was $600,000, they borrowed $500,000, and now the house is only worth $400,000 because of the massive supply, the overbuilding, and also the massive amount of foreclosures that came onto the market from these funny loans, all these other types of things. And the reason why we had such a high percentage of those loans that went into default actually go into foreclosure and be foreclosed on, as I mentioned, somewhere around 40% or so, is because homeowners had no incentive to stay in the home and continue to make that mortgage payment. The rates were at six, seven, eight percent The loans went adjustable. They put no money down to buy the home and now they're upside down. And so the banks were left with an asset and were like, shoot, this asset is worth less than what we owe on it. Now we just have to throw it on the market. We had all these massive foreclosures. Well, banks obviously learned from that 
And more importantly too, because of the first chart I showed you and people didn't just rip out all their equity over the last couple of years as house prices have continued to move up, it's so important to let's get an actual picture of how much equity people have in their homes that are actually in default or have a potential of actually going to foreclosure. And why that's so important is, is because think of human nature. If somebody, and it's very well known, majority of the average individual's net worth is in their home to equity, okay? Individuals that own real estate versus renters have a substantially different amount of net worth because of real estate creates more millionaires than anyone else. So if the biggest asset you own has equity in it and without it, you have a negative net worth, do you think you're just gonna give that asset up if it has a bunch of money? Very well looking around and being like, wait, we need houses. There's everything on the market is selling in 15 days. Oh, you know what bank, here you go. Just take my house back, have all my equity, see ya. No, it doesn't work like that. People are smart enough to understand that, right? And so what this graph behind me shows me is the distribution of all loans in active forbearance, okay, by current combined to loan value. So meaning of all those individuals that still have an open forbearance, how much equity they got in their homes? So let's break it down, okay? First, we have 1% of homes that are no equity or upside down. 1%, okay? Now, what has 10% or less? Only 8% of houses. Okay. Now, if anybody's known anything about a home, you can list your house for sale with a real estate agent, everything else, you're going to lose about 6%, okay, give or take. So pretty much anybody that has, you know, at least 10% equity in their home can sell their home and get from without it and likely walk with a couple thousand dollars right now. So basically, it's really only these two categories that are really, we should be concerned with hitting the market because they don't have any equity and the bank would likely want to put them onto the market because they don't really have any equity in the home. Now, we have 12% of homes that have at least you know, 11 to 20% equity, 17% of homes that have 21 to 30% equity, and more than 62% of homes have 30% equity or more in their house. So what does that mean? Is 62, 17, and 12, 91% Okay, 91% of all homes in active forbearance have 11% or more equity in them. Okay, nobody's gonna throw them on the market and be like, oh man, I need, the, I need to do a fast sale because I'm in trouble. No, they have equity in their house. They don't need, they're not, it's not a distressed sale. And even if you include the ones that have 20% in there, okay, and you only focus that people have more than 20% equity, you have 80% of houses, that means eight out of every 10 houses that are in active forbearance have more than 20% equity in those houses. So one, they can obviously say, hey bank, don't foreclose on me. The laws are definitely on the homeowner side. I'm gonna sell my house and I don't have to do a quick sale because guess what? Normal escrow, 30 days, houses are selling in 15 to 20 days. Okay, even if it takes them 90 days from now to sell the house, they're still not gonna be foreclosed on. And they're gonna be able to sell the house, pay the bank back all the money they own, and still walk with a lot of money to then either go and rent somewhere, which, you know, depending on the market you're at, or two, go in and maybe move in with family until they save up. But mind you, if these people, as long as they don't have a foreclosure on their record, even if they have a couple months of mortgage rates, depending on the loan program in 12 to 24 months, all these people can be buyers. So it's very important to understand before you hear all these terrible news about all these forbearances out there, you gotta understand what is the makeup of these individuals in forbearance? And what does that data look like? And what did I just show you? We got 91% of all the people that are in active forbearance have 11% equity or more, meaning they could sell at market value and walk with money. And of that, we have 80% of them that can walk with a heck of a lot of money. A heck of a lot of money. Now, does anybody have any idea what the average loan to value was of a house that was foreclosed on between 2009 and 2012? Probably don't, well I'll tell you. The average loan to value of that home was somewhere around a 91% loan to value. What does that mean? They had 9% equity or less, okay? So let's say all of these people go to foreclosure, that's 9% of all those people in active forbearance, okay? That means we're roughly about a quarter million homes that we have worried of actually 
not having enough equity for the homeowner to be motivated to stay into that hotel or that house. So let's backtrack on this, recap it all for you guys. People were smart. They didn't rip all their equity out of their house. They were cash out refinances in terms of billions of equity pulled out, put in the pockets of homeowners was literally one third in 2020 of the amount that they were pulling out in 2006 and 2007. Secondly, we know that the total amount of individuals that were in forbearances, around 5.3 million, 44% of them never even stopped paying on their mortgage, and they're completely out of forbearance. The ones that are actively in forbearance, most of them were auto-enrolled in that for an additional six or 12 months directly by their bank, and the makeup of those 2.3 million people that are currently in active forbearance, the ones that we know could, what is that potential risk? We have 91% of them that have 11% equity in their home or more. So next time that you're around a dinner table and somebody wants to argue with you about all the foreclosures that are coming and all these people that are gonna just lose their houses, I just gave you the tools to win that argument, so win that argument.